Welcome back to Ozark's Fox Sam. We're going to toss it over to Kaylee, who's talking about how important it is for food banks during this pandemic. Kaylee? That's right. As some Missourians return to work this week, there's still a major underlying issue, and that's food insecurity. And local food bank Ozark food Har Ozark's Food Harvest, uh, beyond the surplus of mouths to feed, they've got other hurdles to jump. Now, what we're experiencing, like a lot of folks, are um, a major disruption in the food pipeline, and it's just there's not much there. Uh, to be had and what's there to be had is very, very expensive. Truckloads of food across the country are priced double or more, even at a wholesale level. We saw a truckload of tuna go from $46,000 one week to $76,000 the next week. And both of those were extraordinarily high prices. 450,000 Missourians have filed for unemployment just in the past five weeks. And when faced with an electric bill, or a grocery bill, food gets put second. So many people suddenly unemployed that had never had to access the emergency food system before, so they didn't know where to go. Which is where Ozark's Food Harvest steps in to help. There's disruptions in the processing uh, part of things, and so there's going to be a lot of fresh food like milk and meat and uh, um, dairy available. Uh, we hope to capitalize on that in the coming months and get that into the Ozarks and get it out to people that need it as well. To keep the food bank running at full strength during this time of extra need, some reinforcements were brought in. We were able to hire full-time 15 unemployed workers uh, to come here and sort food and, and do other stuff for us so they don't have to mess with unemployment or any of that stuff, um, you know, and they can help out do it in a good cause. And those folks are thrilled to be here. 45 sets of helping hands from the Missouri National Guard are also clocking in throughout the month of May. But maybe the biggest help is monetary donations. It's the biggest bang for your buck in terms of providing safe, nutritious food to people who need it. The other thing is we don't want folks going out, leaving their homes, going to the grocery stores, trying to buy food that's not there on the shelves anyway. And your donations are stretching big time right now with the One Million Meals campaign, which turns $1 into $10 of groceries for families in need. We had a gentleman come in and give us a $100 donation. And he said, you guys helped my family when the federal government was shut down and both our federal jobs were furloughed and we didn't have any income. So this is me given back to those folks that are in that situation now. We see that all the time. And that if that's not a message of hope, I don't know what is. We truly are all in this together and, and we can get through this together. We just need a little extra help right now. And you know that's what it's all about, people helping other people, uh, especially giving back when you can and how you can, and this is one resource of how you can give back to our community in this time of need. Uh, go to their website at ozarksfoodharvest.org where you can find a button to donate. Again, your $1 donation turns into $10 of groceries for a family in need. I thought it was also amazing that they took displaced workers, 15 of them, with funding from Missouri Foundation for Health and gave them jobs in this time of need. Wow, that is, that is. This is something that is a problem in our community mm -hmm. anyway, and that's just been compounded with Yeah, COVID. and uh, Bart also said that he thinks that it'll be a very slow process, mm -hmm. you know, with these people getting back to work, <clears throat> getting those paychecks, getting enough money mm -hmm. in their banks to uh, yeah. to provide food right. for them, themselves, and their families. Yeah. So I just don't understand the food process. price gouging. I just don't understand how that works and who can stop it and why they even yeah. feel like, you know, we're all human and we have empathy, right. you, would yeah, you would think. And you would think in this time of need, it's not about the bottom dollar, it's about helping those in need. So I just yeah, don't understand right. the gouging. I don't know why people do what they do sometimes. Yeah, uh, no. Bart told me about that too. He said that it's mainly just supply and demand. Uh, Honestly, they just don't have the food, so it's taking more yeah. resources to create that food. And that's that's it. Just make well, see. And he was talking yeah. about tuna. It would be interesting to dive into that story and realize, you know, because we don't think about all yeah. the processes. And, 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 and he also told me that tuna is one of the cheapest really? meat sources oh, yeah. that, mm -hmm. that they purchase. For protein, um, yeah. You guys know I'm a fan of canned meat. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, yeah. I, and when you go to the grocery store, by the way, I tried to put spam on my grocery list and it was sold out. 
Well, so that's another one of those things that people think they can buy and store it and it won't go bad. Uh, so you can yeah. use it for the future if you can't find the fresh meat. Because right. I was like, I just want some spam and it was sold I'm out. I'm sorry, I don't have any to share with you. Dad gummit. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I wasn't the one taking the spam. <laughs> I, I, Kaylee and I didn't hoarders, buy it. Off the, hoarders, hoarders. Did, did not buy it off the shelves, no. Not, not I, not I. But yeah, uh, this, is, this is still a need. It will be a need that will continue in the weeks to come. So, any way that you can help. Mm -hmm. is definitely appreciated. Donate so they can help uh, offset yeah. the cost of what's Correct. happening right now. Yeah, I feel bad too because I don't, I'm not going to have a garden this season because I'm moving and I usually try to donate the extra produce to them because I know oh, yeah. it's harder and mm -hmm. produce is more expensive because yeah. it's fresh and it, it goes mm -hmm. bad sooner. So I'm going to try to see about getting something in the ground, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, that'd be good. J just to help out, especially yeah. in this time. And if people can garden, that's another great way. I see yes. a lot more people trying yes, to do that. absolutely. Yes. Yeah, even if it's just a little uh, small gardens, they're yeah. trying and, to do it. And by the way, you, tomatoes, pretty easy to grow. Yeah. Reduce some tomatoes. Yeah. Never tried. Do some, uh, uh, if you have the area in your backyard, do some squash zucchini. Yeah. Pretty easy to grow. Yeah. Like start with the easy stuff that you yeah. really can't kill. Right. Yeah. And, and start with that. But you could seriously go home after work and pick something that makes them for dinner with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very good. And I mean, tomatoes, you can make so many things with tomatoes. Yes. You can make so many things with squash. That's right. That's There's good. so many recipes out there. Well, thanks, Thank Kaylee. you, Kaylee. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. All right. We're going to be back with time pieces. Yes. Time after time pieces. pieces. <laughs> Jinx by me, Coke. Yes. <laughs>